One of the things that are needed to pursue the quest to understand the brain are tools. Tools like an atlas of the brain, or as an observer, like an observatory that uh, would allow to study how brain cells, for example, participate in creating human behavior. Uh, how information is encoded in our brain to, and transformed in order to produce specific behaviors. And that's what the Allen Institute is working on, creating some of those tools. Needless to say, it's a very ambitious undertaking, and one of the people behind that project is the chief scientific officer of the Institute, Professor Christoph Koch. Professor Koch, welcome to the Brain Forum. Thank you, Bruno. Welcome. I wanted to talk to you about an alternative uh, to um, an alternative approach to studying the brain outside of academia. Universities are very good at discovery, but they're less good at systematically following, following up that discovery. It's just, as uh, Patrick uh, Abisher said this morning, it's one man or one person, one lab, one ego, and putting 10 or 20 or 30 of those egos together um, uh, is difficult because each of these egos wants to pursue their own, th um, his or her own thing. So I'll talk to you about a different way of doing this. So the, the, the challenge for the brain is the is following. The b uh, brain, a human brain or an animal brain, consists of a very large number on the order of 10 to the 11. Uh, components that are highly heterogeneous, it's not just one neuron, we now know they are on the order of uh, 10 to the 3, a thousand different types of cells. They interact with 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 5 other cells uh, across a very large range of spatial, t uh, 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 spatial temporal scales. This is an organization we're not used to. When we are looking at, uh, at simple physical systems like galaxies, um, we have ho highly homogeneous systems, or we build systems like computers or like B777s, airplanes. Again, they consist out of a, a smallish number of components that only interact with a small number of other components. Uh, brains are very, very different. We don't have a list of the cell components, so today we do not know how many different cell types there are. We don't. It's uh, shocking. There are roughly 10,000 different labs worldwide exploring the brain, 10,000, but they're heading off in all possible directions, like in a sociological Big Bang. Everybody does a different species, a different animal, a different developmental time point, a different techniques. So um, it's a big zoo. Uh, universities are simply not set up for this sort of large-scale uh, large systematic efforts. And they're, they're, so far, there have been very limited interactions between experiments and models and theory. Um, so we, we try to offer an, a different vision, a different way to organize science. It's, it's, not, an, it's not either or, it's just one out of many different forms of, of to-do science, I think, that are possible in the 21st century. So we are an independent, not-for-profit medical, um, medical uh, research organization. Uh, we were started uh, 10 years ago. Everything we do, we do for the basic support of uh, basic science. Everything we do, there's no patents, there's no licenses. Anybody can download everything we do entirely for free without even having to log in. Our, our CEO is uh, Alan Jones, is, a, is a, a PhD in cell biology. And we, what we do, we will make tools and information available to the general uh, scientific community worldwide. Right now, we are 225 staff. We are expanding to be 500 uh, people and, um, uh, in a couple of years now in Seattle. So we are somewhere between a neurobiology university lab, where you have a bunch of uh, professors, 20, 30, 40 professors, each pursuing their own goals, and uh, biotech, where you have a very specific goal um, and you're trying to meet it on a very tight uh, deadlines. So a lot of our DNA comes from biotech. We have uh, project management, we have deadlines, we have advisory councils, etc. We have a matrixed organization. Uh, last year, we announced a big 10-year uh, uh, program um, uh, in a press conference for which uh, Paul Allen committed um, uh, for the first uh, three years of this project uh, $300 million, but it's a 10-year it's a project. 
Um, we, we, uh, currently, our budget is, is, on the, uh, is between 15 and 80 million a year. And this is all made uh, possible by the unprecedented generosity of one single individual, Paul Allen. So we, uh, what we have done, as uh, Bruno mentioned, we've, made, we've built a large scale set of large-scale atlases that anybody can use. Uh, the first atlas was a, a brain atlas for the mouse, where in 10,000 mice we expressed um, every single gene in very high resolution using in situ hybridization. We have these same atlases for the developing mouse, for the monkey. The developing monkey for the human brain last year was a very big um, paper in Nature. And um, uh, you can download the data where we, in six humans, we did a, a thousand microarray um, uh, in each person doing um, uh, um, the microarray data in, in a thousand different locations in the brain, in six brains. And we also subsequently did this in developing brain, in fetal tissue and in, um, in an early childhood. Um, so what's typical, all the data we, we make publicly accessible via APIs, and we make this data available as soon as it passes interior quality control. So we reject a lot of data if it doesn't satisfy our, uh, our criteria, but as soon as it does, it goes out onto, onto the web. All data freely available without any commercial restriction. You can right now, as I speak, download any of this data. And the data is made available one or two years prior to publication. Academics have this panic when they think, if I put any of my data available, I'm going to be scooped. In our experience, certainly, that does not seem to be the case. So I mean, these are some of the other uh, atlases that, that we have online. Um, so we have a lot of data. We have roughly 3 million images, uh, um, a couple of million microscope slides um, in, in these different species, human, mouse, and, um, and, and monkey. Right now, we're focusing exclusively on mouse and, and, and the human brain. So one of these projects, it's a large project, probably involved, by the time it's done, 100, 150 scientists and technologists and engineers, is called MindScope. This is focused on the, on the mouse, um, on mouse cortex, where we're trying to understand um, at the level of individual neuron switching and sending action potential, what is the secret of the, of the cortex, what enables it, the cortex to do so many complicated things that it does in, in both us as well as in uh, mouse. So here we focus on the mouse visual system. The advantage of the mouse is, unlike a human, in a single observational chamber, you can see the entire visual system. So this is the visual cortex of the, of the mouse. It looks, a, uh, looks very similar to the human, except it's much smaller. And this is the primary visual cortex. Those are the associated visual cortical areas. There are 12 of them. In a the human, there are 30. Roughly here, there are 12. We know how many neurons we're talking about. So there are from the eye, there are roughly 45,000 neurons coming out of the eye going to an intermediate relay station, 18,000. Then in primary visual cortex, it ends in layer 4. There's 75,000. In all of visual cortex, there's 350,000. And in the entire uh, brain, in the entire cortex, are 14 million, which is almost exactly 1,000 times less than a human. So here you can see, if we superimpose 1,200 brains, so this is 1,200 mouse brain, we can get a high, very high-resolution atlas where you can, in fact, see the, in, uh, the individual uh, barrels if you do the registration properly. For this particular project, we are sort of organized in these, in these columns, uh, electrophysiology, neuroanatomy, and, and, um, and modeling. And then the other thing we do is we do pipelines. So pipeline is a set of processes where, we, 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 where we, we string a whole set of different technologies together on a very high, uh, using standard uh, operating procedure, quality control, uh, where we have a controlled input and we get a very controlled output that we then put out on the, on the, um, on the web. We're setting up pipelines um, to do in vitro a single cell characterization in both human cells from surgery, from um, induced pluripotent stem cell from fetal tissue, as well as from, uh, from mouse to do characterization in a couple of thousand cells per year where you go inside the cell, you characterize the electrophysiological behavior, you model them, and then you characterize their, um, their, their morphology, and you do the transcriptomics at the level of single cell and make all of that available to the community. So we go into a particular region of the mouse, we inject, um, we, we, t we place a tiny, tiny injection, either in a wild-type mouse or in a, in a Cree mouse, where we inject it with a virus that carries a, pat a particular promoter. The, this, and we wait two weeks for the, the, this virus will infect a particular population of cells, and then these cells will now be fluorescent yellow. 
and they go anywhere in the brain. Now we, we, what we do, we, we, we cut up the brain um, uh, um, and we image it every 100 micrometer. So it's a, th this was it. It's coming to an end now. We're finishing this first phase. It's a five-year project uh, in 2,000 mice, and um, this has involved 100 man years uh, to, for total cost of 25 million dollars. But now that we have a set, a set up, we work with other people in the community to take the same pipeline and to analyze many more brains. So if people are interesting, they should approach me if they have a particular brain, a particular uh, promoter for a particular um, uh, population in the brain. We're very interested in under this very standardized condition to analyze it and put it up in the atlas. This was an injection in primary visual cortex. And you can see it projects down into, the, into other cortical areas, and it projects down into the LGN and into the colliculus. And you can see, it's, if you go to the original data, it's very, very beautiful data. What we then get is a, is a connectivity matrix for the entire mouse brain at the light level of uh, resolution. So what it is, each row here represents one injection in one particular site, and each column corresponds to uh, where, um, its, uh, its projection, where it ended, in the, on the same side, in ipsilateral or contralateral. And here you can see it for the entire brain. This is wild-type mouse. This is in 400 wild-type mouse. You can process it informational, and now you get a, connect a WIG a connectivity matrix where what each row now denotes one area. Uh, each, this is one area, and this is one area. So you can see the, the connectivity. You can also do virtual tractography, and you can all do all of this in real time in 3D. So here you see, for example, um, uh, the tractography of, of all the cortical projections. And you can do that from anywhere in the brain to anywhere else in the brain. So we have this high five-dimensional space. This is done uh, with, um, with Clay Reed, where we want to image um, different neurons in different layers, projecting to different output areas, um, using different Cree lines, uh, using different visual uh, stimuli, and using di different types of visual behavior. So it's a very large dimensional space um, that we're getting ready to do here in a highly standardized condition. Together with IMAC in Belgium, we're developing, uh, and Janelia Farm and uh, University College London, we're developing a high um, uh, advanced silicon probes where we can record from maybe 500 locations here um, and then amplify the signal um, uh, here at the base and then send out using um, um, multi-channel techniques to, to, to maximum. To, uh, so we only have 12 wires going out rather than 512 wires. And again, as soon as these techniques are ready and, and work, we, we'll put them out there so that anybody in the community can, uh, can use these techniques. We're doing a lot of big data analysis. So right now, already, we have big data. We have a, a couple of petabytes of data for both human uh, brain and mouse brain. We're now, um, we're, we're very interested in creating metadata standards. You probably all know in neuroscience, there are almost no standards. So a spike is not a spike. It's not a spike. Every community uses spike in a different way. There are different spike uh, detection, and there are a dozen or two dozen different spike detection discrimination algorithms. There's no standard yet. We're trying to introduce standards to work together uh, with our data and a few other um, influential labs, which turns out to be really, really hard to try to develop a standard that we can all agree on, which makes the interchange of scientific data much, much easier than it's, uh, it's possible. We're also working very hard to integrate um, uh, different modalities, e -phys, electrophysiological data and optical imaging data that after all is from the same neurons sometimes, um, yet typically they're kept totally different, uh, they're kept apart. We like to integrate it together with, transcript, uh, with transcriptomics data and with morphological data. Present all of that data. We are going into the cloud since these data sets are now so big, right? If, if one, uh, one mouse brain is already a terabyte and we have a few thousands of them, obviously you can't just download them to your hard disk and play around with them. So we are now thinking of moving uh, totally into the cloud. We are next to Google and we're working with, uh, with Google in this that we do the, um, all the data display in the cloud, and then we're developing a lot of analytics. So here we're working with the, the machine learning people at Google to try to do all the, um, the data discovery, data mining, community detection um, uh, in, the, uh, in the cloud, where it's also accessible to anybody else on the planet. So if, for example, if people here are interested in, you can go to the cloud, you can access it, and you, you, can, you can play around with it. It's not restricted to any one particular geographic location. 
And so here our dream is within a couple of years to, to, to as I said, to move, to try to, uh, to, try to, to initiate a move towards uh, uh, standardized data and to move up into the cloud. And we're thinking of a model where people will apply, okay, I'd like to use the observatories for half a year. I have this particular experiment that I'm interested in doing. Well, so once we have all these observatories up and running, staffed by pro professional people who do nothing but doing these experiments, or they do nothing but surgery or nothing but behavior, it's going to be very easy to do this in a very high standardized conditions. So it's, it, these are plans for large-scale, high-throughput, 10-year-plus uh, efforts that come with a bunch of unique challenges. So first of all, the challenge that everybody has who starts a lab, you have to build a state-of-the-art lab that, that's rival to no one. Um, much, much more difficult is to do a very tight integration between um, anatomy, between the, doing the different physiological methods, each of which has their own tradition with their own tools, their own algorithm, and modeling and theory, and get everybody together on the same page. That is very, very difficult. Because then we have this virtual loop where we can do, you know, very quickly, you can test an experiment, you can, you can, you can model it, you can go back to repeat the experiment because it's all done by one group having the same algorithm, the same analysis software, the same limb software. It is challenging. It's a, it's a, data, it's a challenge because, again, uh, what uh, uh, Professor Abisher said, that uh, people, of course, have their own interests and their own, they're driven by their own curiosity, but somehow we have to harness their creativity and drive of these individuals who are willing to work very, very hard uh, because they're, they're, they're motivated by something. But we have to emphasize the team aspect. The good news is that we have one uh, model of, of or several models, both in astrophysics and in, and in elementary particle physics, where that works very well. So we can also think of this as an experiment in the, in the sociology of, um, of neuroscience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.